Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. They're ready to go as they get set to match up on, with the Los Angeles Rams. A first down throw for Mayfield. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver, and it's second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. On second down, Mayfield again. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Throw left side, caught by the tight end to Joku. Give him nine there on the first down completion. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That one a first down pickup of eight. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Now the third leading rusher among rookies last year. It's Nick Chubb. They'll get this up to the 34, and a good lane opening up right away for him. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. To throw, Mayfield. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for offense. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. On the run, this is Hilliard. And all the way down inside the five to the four. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. They go play action here on first down. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. The lone man in the backfield here is Chubb on second and goal. Get him, get him, get him. 
Mayfield to throw it. And that's going to be caught for Browns. Touchdown. Rashard Higgins there to make the grab. And the Browns take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Los Angeles coming onto the field here. You know, week one, they had to go all the way across the country to Carolina. Did get the win 30-27 to despite a slow start. Curious about that run game, though. Todd Gurley came on late like the rest of the offense, but really was not a factor in the first half. And that's a little bit of a surprise because all offseason we were told what? Todd Gurley was fine. Don't worry about Todd Gurley. He'll be okay. Only five carries in the first half. Malcolm Brown carried the road, but he did come on in the second half, finished with 14 carries, 97 yards, and there were a few runs that looked like Todd Gurley. That's a big win for the Rams going on the road week one and playing in the heat in Carolina. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They run, it's Gurley. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. A shotgun snap for gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And out across midfield down to the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. Cooks now in his second season with the Rams. He's had four straight years over 1,000 yards. He had two with the Saints, one with New England, and then he went over 1,000 again last year with the Rams. 80 catches, 1,204 yards. On first down, it's Gurley. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 19. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good, that middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right, probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well, <laughs> and he's got it. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, 
ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes. Changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys to continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. And this offense back to needing 10 yards after the false start. Third and 10. From the gun, here's Gone. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. And Zerline's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. Zerline, of course, last year had likely the iconic field goal of the season, booting that 57-yarder in the Superdome to send his squad to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you really hurt the Saints fans on that one, didn't you? Sorry. They didn't want to hear that at all. But this guy deserves his nicknames. Greg the Leg, Legatron, because the ball goes through the post at a heavy rate, 87% in 2018. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. As Cleveland comes back out here, let's just look back to week one, Charles. You think about all the excitement that there was around that city. Probably as much excitement for that franchise going into week one as there has been in a few decades. And they really fell on their face, 43-13. to 13. So I don't want to overreact. Their season's not over, but boy, it did not look good. No, to put it mildly, the last time they won a game on opening weekend, 2000. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Throwing Mayfield. He's got Higgins over the middle. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Here we go, D, get off the field. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going go. out of bounds. Go. First time they've here hooked go. up here. Good for 17 and a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over My the years in the NFL? Way. The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield. That's complete to Demetrius Harris, the tight end. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. 
found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Mayfield now. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And that will fall incomplete. Oh, they took a shot there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. And again, it's Mayfield. Caught left side, it's Beckham. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Mayfield with it once more. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So on fourth down, out comes the Browns kicker, Austin Seibert. The wind is at his back here in the second quarter. Seibert able to knock this one through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to three. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown, I get that. But sometimes those nine play drives pay dividends later with another nine play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. After the made field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll bring up a second and 14. Receiver complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Goff in the offense with a first and 10. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. Goff now looks to throw. Throw Let's left go. side, complete to Cup. That throw good for four. It's second down. You don't want no you don't want no I know problem. many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their what? speed, what? and their route running savvy. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. <laughs> Goff now to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup he leaves him with ready. third and one. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man no, coverage and Please. hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Check, check, tight right, tight right. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Todd Gurley, wave goodbye. Touchdown, L.A. Todd Gurley, 
54 yards as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. Well, they were just hoping that run would pick up the first. They got the whole enchilada. And I'm so used to teams on third down, doesn't matter how far they need for a first down, throwing the ball. Instead, they run it, and as you said, pick up the first down, and then some, and then some. <laughs> In fact, everything, all the way for a touchdown. Terrific play. Zerline connects on the extra point, and we are even at 10 apiece. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a first down on a gain of 10. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually wrote that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. Mayfield finding Beckham, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. To throw again on second down, Mayfield. And he comes back with one complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right, got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The last play on the completion got him half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. On first down, they'll run with Chubb, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. They go with Chubb on second down. 
The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. From the gun, Mayfield to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down, and he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. Seibert's kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the made field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Brought down that time by Christian Kirksey. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They go play action with Gurley. Now go off. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. He wipes out the penalty yardage with a good run to get it back to second and seven. So many questions about Todd Gurley in the offseason. How good is the knee? I mean, remember, he had a heavy workload the last couple years, nearly 4,000 yards from scrimmage, 40 total touchdowns, but just four carries in the NFC Championship game, 10 in the Super Bowl. So we'll see what kind of usage he gets this season. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 37. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Goff now looking to throw. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third in less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. 
That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second and five now. Golf. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he'll get it down this Let's time to the 17. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has Let's something going three. really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. <laughs> From the red zone now, gone. And his throw here is incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And that'll bring up second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit. But only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Zerline's kick is up and through. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? All square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. Couple completions, you string them together. Could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. He's got Njoku over the middle. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Yeah, Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Give him nine on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. 
I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's Mayfield, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on to the contact. Brings up second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Side that's caught by Landry. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. <laughs> Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. That's complete right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 on, seconds to go in half number one. seven-yard line and he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three three yards is the gain that time second and goal so we come upon halftime with a tie score 13 all as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report coach and ready to get the party started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard and he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Here's gone, and that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, Charles, as we peek back to week one, what would you say were the positives for some teams or individuals that you took away? Well, it started on opening night, Green Bay, and their defense, not necessarily Aaron Rodgers and what they did going into Chicago and winning. Kansas City, they picked right up where they left off with Patrick Mahomes, explosive on offense. How about Baltimore and Lamar Jackson? He's not just a single wing tailback, folks. He's a quarterback. And Tennessee, going into Cleveland, Marcus Mariota, Derrick Henry, put up 43 points on the Browns. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. To throw is gone. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Well, they do get five there, but it's not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. 
Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. John Johnson, one of the leading tacklers from the safety position in the NFL, there to make the stop. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw Mayfield. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Rashard Higgins was the one he was looking for. And it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Now Natson. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A lane opens up that time as he'll be brought down just short of a first after a gain of about nine. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Another carry now for Gurley. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Let's go. Let's go. Let's a gain go. of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Look, 180, check, 53, one. So we got man, man, man. Now Goff on first down. And Cooks has it over the middle. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now gone. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That catch good for five. It's third down. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. First down, Mayfield. 
And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Well, partner, I want to revisit week one. I got your positive takeaways from the first week of the NFL season. How about the bad stuff? Well, let's pump the brakes a little bit on the Super Bowl celebration in Cleveland. Yeah. They have to win some games first, and maybe now that's the best thing that could have happened to them. Maybe they can settle in because that's a good roster. Miami, we suspected it was going to be rough. I don't know that we suspected that bad on opening day. Jacksonville, the defense is supposed to carry this team. They got torched by Kansas City. And Pittsburgh just didn't show up against New England. And I don't think we expected that at all because I thought Pittsburgh's defense was really good in the preseason. On first and 10, Mayfield. That's to the right side and complete to Najoku. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter, it's a good running back dive play. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Mayfield, and that's incomplete. Demetrius Harris, the intended target, but now it's third down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Natson. That's a 49-yard punt. Eight, though, on the return. You're right. You're right. And the offense right. will take over with a new set of downs. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn into big plays. They go play action here on first down. And that one's complete to Gurley. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. On first down, gone. Well, that'll be caught by Cup. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 30. 
never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Goff now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. Meanwhile, Goff to Gurley as he drops it off for his running back. Call it a three yard gain, and it'll be a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And he will have the go. first before go. he's brought down right go. on the chalk of the 20. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. He had another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. On first and goal, Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Todd Gurley. His second touchdown of the night. And they're able to break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter. Now he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Baker Mayfield, as a rookie, three times he led the Browns back to victory in the fourth quarter. What can he do here in year number two? 
And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Boom. Bryce Hager oh, just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the my defense bad. is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. Mike, number 53. Mike, 53. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Robert Woods, former USC man, the intended target. But it's going to be second down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again here on second down, this time complete. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. 11 yards there, first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Goff on first down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. He gets it to Gurley, complete. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That play was well covered, just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Throwing again is gone. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now, that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there because trying is one thing. We can second-guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Mayfield to throw it. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. 
After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Mayfield now. Looking for Landry, and it's intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. And he will bring it back. It's an interception return for a Rams touchdown. Little bit of a backbreaker right there. You're down close, one score game, trying to push the ball down the field and score, and you throw a pick six. And sometimes you take a little bit of a gamble when you're making your throws, right? Sometimes you press it a little bit more than maybe you wanted to because you want that score so badly. In this case, it cost them. Zerline good with a PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. We want it. Come on. Back to it after the pick six. Mayfield, he's got Njoku over the middle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my downfield. I'm my special, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Mayfield looks to throw to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Here's Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection? but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams 23. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and can serve as much as possible. Mayfield on first down. This will be caught inside the 10. And able to get him down, but he does reach the 5. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. And he's going to get them about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Do you think after that last run, they're thinking to themselves, we had to wait all day to play this night game? and we're still not able to run the ball the way we want to. Yeah, this defense, they've risen to the challenge all evening long. From the two now, second and goal. Right, right, right. He's right here, he's right, right. Three down, three down. Three down. Three down. Throwing, Mayfield. And 
this is caught for Browns. Touchdown by Landry. Two yards on the touchdown there as his guys are back within a single score. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. Cybert on for the PAT. Cut the lead down now to a touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you'd think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 Let's before being one, taken three. down. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to get it to his receiver, Woods, and now it's second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Here's gone. He's got Higby complete right side. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Here's gone, and Cooks has it over the middle. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. So first and ten now from the 30. To the air again. Golf. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they move go, this all Let's the go. way down to the nine. A well-executed 22-yard game. As the field starts to get condensed, the defense likes that a lot because now you don't have as much space to cover, but a well-run corner route there. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play as we have reached the two-minute warning. Defense! 
Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Goff now looks to throw. And it is caught at the seven-yard line. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Goff now to throw. Now he's got it. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game, his third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Mayfield and the Browns down by 10. A little under a minute 50 remaining. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. Now Mayfield. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Mayfield trying to get him up to the line as fast as he can. Throwing again on second down. Mayfield, throw left side to Higgins. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 16 yards, a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. He got 29 yards that time. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Mayfield. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Mayfield to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. The Browns on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and nine. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
Looking to erase a two-score deficit here in the fourth quarter. Going for some big plays. Yeah, they certainly were. They just decided one shot, didn't they? Forget trying to move the ball downfield in small little increments. Let's go for the big one. But how about the defense playing situational football, looking at the scoreboard and realizing what can hurt us most? The deep shot. They played it well. Seibert able to knock this one through. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So he remains perfect, three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. So the onside kick will come with 17 seconds to play. And the Rams have got it. And that should just about seal this one. The uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. The Rams go victory formation as they take the knee. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here. And I tell you, this was a fun one, just a close game. Nothing comes easy in this league, as you know. They had to work for that victory. I've got to go back to what you just said. Nothing comes easy in this league. How many times have we talked to coaches prior to a game and assessed, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, the whole deal. Even in games when one coach was a decided favorite, what do they always say to us? But you do know, this is really a seven-point league. Seven points either way usually decides a ball game. We had exactly that in this one. And not only that, but this is a gutsy road victory, one they can hang their hat on. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night.